GM, fellow, best ball, sickos, I trust you are all blasting off on puppies over the weekend. So let's head into this week with a little BBM3 draft. Bro, I'm telling you, hop in these drafts when these idiot streamers are trying to draft and talk to the chat at the same time. It's so plus EV, bro. Oh no, I think I, I accidentally just took Kenyon Drake and Josh Jacobs. What do we call that? A no-no. <laughs> no way, you don't have to set your lineup. That's incredible. And recently eclipsed 23%, and I'd much prefer it to be in the more 21 to 22% range. I just realized at the end of that opening, it says BBM2 on it. I'm going to have to get that fixed. We need um, we need a refresh on that one. Maybe, maybe I'll do another Best Ball Bros video. I feel like there's enough new terms in the lexicon. I mean, did we even get a Bi-Week Bros reference in that video? Did we get a Barbell Bro reference in that one? Handcucking your running backs. I think it might be time for another best ball bro video. Uh, I'm actually gonna make a note of that right now. Next script to start on, best ball bros volume two. There's too much stuff. Lots changed in a year. We've welcomed a lot more people into our community. Good morning, everyone, GM, GM, GM. Now, you guys are gonna be upset. No coffee pour this morning. No coffee pour because it is iced coffee season. Don't be fooled by the glass. I'm not drinking Guinness at 10 a.m. on the Tuesday after Memorial Day. It is an iced coffee. So no, no pour for you. No pour. Maybe that will be the new bit that I'll do. Um, what's it? Uh, do like the drip coffee. And I'll just turn on the camera about an hour before and just let the drops of iced coffee slowly drip into my cup for all you ASMR fans. Mm. GM, 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 no poor. I know, Casey, you love the poor. Hang on, Casey, I have, why did I get a $50 Venmo request from you over the weekend, Casey? Answer right now, otherwise I will dox your real name and your Venmo address. Because I did give you $25 for drafting Drew Locke during that Splash Play BBM3 draft. And yet here I am minding my own business over a long weekend and I get a $50 Venmo request from Casey. I meant to put you on blast when I got that, but I forgot. And now I just remembered. So answer the question, Casey, why $50 Venmo request? Um, Gosh, you guys, you guys love the coffee pour. You got rugged on it. How about, can I give you some ice clinking in the glass? Would that suffice? Oh yeah, that's getting all the ASMR juices going. I can tell. There you go. Mm. Uh, J. Mike, are you actually getting coffee beans farmed in engagement friendly farms? This is true. All of my uh, engagement farming as well as my coffee beans are locally sourced and very organic. Um, KZ, you you getting drunk and send me Venmo requests. I, I this I will block you on Venmo. I need I need a mute button on Venmo like I have on Twitter. Um, all right. Let's um let's hop into it. Uh, I I was doing a bunch of puppy drafts over the weekend, trying to get those in before that thing fills because it seems like we're on pace for that to fill here in about a week. But what we do on this Monday morning, although Tuesday morning this week is do a best ball mania three draft. So that is what we are going to do. Good luck to everyone trying to get in the draft. Uh, hope everyone who ends up in the runoff draft has fun. You guys are, this is just such a perverted, sit nice and close to the mic. That's true ASMR. I can't tell if you actually want that or if you're just telling me what true ASMR is. Tommy G has 15 puppies complete and going. Nice. You're ahead of me. I think I'm only at like eight or nine. Um, Michael says, Pete, I was in a puppy draft with you and Spags. Yes. I, I forget. Was that Friday? Yeah, that was Friday afternoon. I had hopped in a puppy draft. Oh my goodness. The influencer 101 streak, uh, it's been pretty absurd to the where people on uh on Twitter and stuff are even starting to get suspicious. I do draw the one two here. Michael Dubner is gonna update this stupid spreadsheet of my stream drafts 
and show my outrageous 101 and 102 clip in drafts. I'm wasting it all now. I am destined to an August filled with 111s and 112s. Don't make me do a video on uh, small sample sizes and the laws of small numbers here. Um, what do we want to do? What do we want to do? Peter takes cup. Um, let's do McCaffrey. I have McCaffrey is probably of the guys in the top five that I'm least exposed to so far. I have a ton of all the wide receivers have a lot of JT, but not a lot of McCaffrey. So let's, uh, let's do a, a McCaffrey here. Yeah, let it get it all out. Get it all out, Willis. Just getting here. And of course, he gets the 102, the Charlie Day conspiracy theory. Look at you guys. <laughs> okay, FF Doom got the 102 in the alt draft. That's what I'm saying, Josty. The draft regression is going to hit hard. That's like in all of our main event drafts last year for ship chasing. I mean, we couldn't sniff a top five pick. I think we were like 108 to 112 in 90% of our drafts. I think we got like one share of Alvin Kamara early, and that was it as far as early picks. Mm. Aaron says, imagine having so many 101s you can pass on JT at 102. Yes, I'm having to force diversification because the randomizer for draft slots isn't giving it to me naturally. How many BBMs have I done? I believe I'm at, I believe this is my 26th or 27th. Um, I'm not blasting off as hard as you guys, not necessarily by choice. I've just legitimately uh, been very busy and, uh, and just haven't had uh, quite the time to put in the work here. I am, uh, I know I've been teasing this video for a while, but it is close to being over the finish line here. Um, I should have it posted in the next day or two. Also, the Underdog Cardio Club is going to be launching in the next day or two. So lots of fun um, best ball content coming your way this week. Ben said he got McCaffrey at six the other day. Wow. Wow. Yeah, you'll get what well, you'll get the rogue. What, Derrick Henry in the top five? I'm trying to think who else gets in the top five to push McCaffrey to, to six. Yeah, I have a ton of Steph digs too. All right, what do we? What names do we have in here? We have Peter, um, we have FF Child, we got Hawkberg, Kenny Truelove, Casey, Nico Joy, Silas. We got Tigers, JW. HZ. Yeah, King Coakley was uh, re-watching the Bime 4 draft that you guys will be so sick of hearing about by the end of this best ball season as we reference it ad nauseum in streams and in videos. Um, Who would be your cutoff player for a similar build this year? That's a good one. Yeah, I think... I think I would mess around with like a digs, um, a digs that high, maybe an Adams. I think digs is kind of feels like equivalent to that Devonte Adams one last year where he was going like one eight and then you take him one, two. Um, all right. What do we want to do here? You know what? Um, I think I'm going to like one of these running backs coming back. I think there's a tier gap after AJ Brown. Let's grab AJ here. And as far as which one of these running backs we want, Kamara, Chubb, Williams, Barkley, probably just going to take whatever Peter Wiggin gives us here. Kamara would be ideal just because of that uh, week 17 correlation with AJ, but I uh, will happily take um, in the, uh, any of those other running backs as well here. Delete this, Dubner. Delete this. I'm not even going to say it for the audio listeners. If you're listening to this on the In a Vacuum podcast feed, I will not read the comment that Michael Dubner has posted on here. It's a video, a video exclusive. 
Um, let's see. Let's do Chubb. Let's do Chubb. I don't have a lot of Nick Chubb. Updating my spreadsheet. Yeah, everyone, everyone's really been struggling with this idea that I occasionally take uh, take running backs. The, the truth is, in this is what happens. You guys don't realize. I do these drafts, uh, whether it's on here, on ship chasing, even splash play. You guys all come in and you love wide receivers as much as I do. And then a lot of times the best available players, whenever I pick, are running backs. Then I draft in the comfort of my own home without you guys in my drafts. And all of a sudden I'll be able to double tap, you know, T Higgins and AJ Brown at the two, three turn, or maybe Mike Evans falls to the two, three turn. So I get my zero RB exposure when I'm not drafting with you guys. And then I get in rooms with you and you gobble up all the wide receivers and force me to take running backs. You guys did this. It's on you. Hmm. Chris says, take Justin Herbert here, Pete. Why would I take Justin Herbert unstacked? It, it man, that Justin Herbert stack is hard to get. It's really hard. I guess you, I guess you have to do what? You have to take Mike Williams and Keenan at like the two, three turn, but not even the two, three turn, right? Because if you're waiting all the way till the end of the fourth, Herbert's not even making it there. Pick 43. What is pick 43 is what? Four, seven. Yeah. So you basically have to reach for Keenan like mid to late second. Then hope Mike Williams falls to you at three, 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 four. And then hope that Herbert slides to ADP. It's a tough one. Mm. Chris trying to call me the high T influencer. And yet, I have seen your Michael Dubner spreadsheet showing your exposures to various builds. And unlike me, who has 0% exposure to robust RB builds, Chris, you had a meaningful percentage of robust RB builds. So next time you come at me, you better hope I don't have the receipts to clap back. Mm. I guess Nick Chubb is pretty high T. I mean, cost-adjusted, Derrick Henry or Nick Chubb, right? I mean, Nick Chubb's a better pick than Derrick Henry, right? That's probably a hot take, but I kind of feel that way. Two percent robust RB for Chris. He just got destroyed by facts and logic. I said 2% equals meaningful because it is. Anytime you have exposure to the worst draft strategy of all time, any percentage larger than zero is meaningful. What kind of builds do we have cooking here? Kenny True Love with a true zero RB build here. Silas, uh, Silas grabs his first wide receiver in Judy, as does Tigers with Metcalf. Let's check the board here. Maybe I should, maybe, am I going to grab Brees Hall and just tilt all you guys? Oh, man, I have too much Chris Godwin. And then, of course, when I have McCaffrey and want to get that week 17 correlation. Starting to see Brees Hall's ADP tick up. What was it? Was it like 54, 55 a couple weeks ago, up to 46.2? Let's draft Brees Hall and be done. We're done with running back. We are done. There you go, Derek. Mm. Fine. I'll keep loading up on Chris Godwin. Did I see you guys? I saw, did I see Chris Godwin FUD in the Discord? You guys were talking about the injury situations with him and Gallup and some of those timelines. What you fail to realize, however, is that I'm correlated as shit, bro. I am going to have to rename it Brees Hall Breakfast here in a sec, Sam. It We are on. I keep, I, I got to figure out where, 
when I'm done packing my Brees Hall bags. I think right from the gate, I said he was going to be a three, four turn pick by the end of the summer. I just took him at pick 47. Maybe where am I out on Brees Hall at? Like pick, hmm. Let's say, yeah. Let's say around pick 36, 37. That's when I'm done packing my Brees Hall bags. Look at you guys are getting so triggered this morning. No Monday draft. So we're doing it on a Tuesday. No coffee pour because we have iced coffee. No zero RB builds because I'm a high T bro now. You guys got rugged hard this morning. No, Chris, this is what we call a modified hypofragile build. Herbert goes here, what, pick 48? So in this draft, he he falls a little bit. That's not too bad there for Peter. Peter gets Keenan at the 2-3 turn and then Herbert at the 4-5 turn. And he gets his Allen Robinson week 17 correlation there as well. Not too bad. Pretty nice start there. Kenny True Love gets his first running back in Travis Etienne. This is something I was thinking about over the weekend when I was on the beach. I was thinking about how with specific builds, you often get funneled into the exact same player construction. So like I was thinking about how last year with zero RB builds, I was often taking Travis Etienne or Javante Williams um, because those were the best running backs available in late round five, early round six. And how it's almost kind of this cruel thing where you don't, the idea is that the structure is going to free us from being completely reliant on player selection. And yet often when you use these structures by the letter of the law, as the people on Twitter will police you with how you name zero RB, you'll get funneled into the same players over and over, which I think is almost defeats the entire purpose of it. And trying to think through what are the ways that you can bend that strategy so you aren't always taking the same players within that structure. Because then you're going to look back at your structural you know, win rates and they're all going to be dependent on player selection because you are always drafting in the same pockets. And that's why I, I like messing with these structures where it's like, what most people who do hyper fragile are going to start with three running backs. That's where they're going to be most comfortable. So if you can mix in that elite wide receiver, are you getting on a different dot, dot, dot texture of builds? It's just something I've been thinking through a little bit. Did someone take Hertz? Someone take Hertz. Yeah, they took Hertz. HZ took Hertz. All right. That's not a bad team. Mm. Let's see here. All right. We are on the clock here. I think I will go ahead and grab some Schultz. Little AJ Brown, Dalton Schultz, week 16. The question here, I probably, do I pull the trigger on Brady here or do I sit on it? That's the question. I haven't been drafting a lot of Hopkins or Thielen. I feel, man, do I take Hopkins here? Do I just take the, the AARP injured suspended team? Hmm. Gibson and Ayuk, I really don't feel like taking Brady when Burrow and Russell Wilson are still on the board. I guess I'm going to go ahead and grab a share of Hopkins. Ugh, yuck. This, this is what I'm doing. This is the full I trigger you draft. I draft injured guys. I draft suspended players. Whatever, bro. Arizona plays Tampa Bay week 16. Justification. 
Justification. What if he's the guy? What if DeAndre Hopkins is the guy you need in week 17? Double tap tight end. I could have done that. I I don't often double tap tight end in that range. I think if I push it a little further, um, like I've done it with Goddard and Knox before, I guess considering that I, I like Schultz and Hawk a bunch, I should maybe mix in at least one of those teams. Hmm. I know, Chris. That was the decision I was making. Might have to go with a 3RB build today. Have I been hanging out with Leone lately drafting the olds? I haven't. I haven't. I am very excited. Leone is going to uh, be joining us in Vegas for uh, for drafts in September. I've never met Michael Leone in person. We've done many, many hours of streams together, but have never hung out IRL. The ship chasing crew is going to be rolling deep to Vegas in September. We're going to have more details on that in the Discord soon. Let's see here. Um, any insight on how deep to stack? I've been playing around with onslaughts, just no idea if this is EV. Yeah, it's a it's a tough uh, it's a tough um, question. Like one of the teams I highlight in the video that I'm that's going to be released soon. There was a team that had, I believe it was six, it was six or seven Green Bay Packers last year, and four or five Bengals. So over, I know it was eleven total players from two teams. Uh, and they finished in the top 10 in BBM too. So, I mean, that's a that's a pretty clear example of if you identify two undervalued teams that go on to have a massive season, like sure. Uh, I mean, you look at how many things did you have to get right in a build like that? Two things. They got two things right, the Bengals and the Packers. Now that said, the finals for this year are so much bigger that you start to think of it like a DFS tournament. And that's really kind of informing my logic with all of this stuff. And could you win a small field 470 person DFS tournament with two kind of game stacks or two big onslaughts? I think so. But it's still a narrower outcome where I'm thinking, what are the odds that those two teams are putting up massive enough scores, not only week 15, not only week 16, but then also in week 17. It's just a tougher needle to thread. Um, so it's not something I'm doing to go out of my way with like those mega onslaughts. But on the other hand, I don't necessarily think it's awful if you're getting good values on, you know, I don't know, um, underappreciated offenses. All right, let's see what we are going to do here. Dr. Cunningham is on the clock. Let me go. Chris G. Chris is having, um, I think, a rough show. Chris is having a rough show. Tried to own me for being a robust RB bro. And then I threw the data back at him. And then he told me the QBs are going to be gone. And I was torn about passing up on Tom Brady some 20 picks ago. But lo and behold, Chris, look who's here. Look who's here some 20 picks after ADP. And you know what? Let's just go ahead and line up the olds, line up the double stack. Russell Gage, come on down. Don't doubt me, Chris. Yeah, it's I think the the onslaught conversation isn't that it's not possible on an individual week. Um I think it's certainly possible and actually probably one of your best ways. Like if you look at, you know, some of those lineups that um Leone would run in the Thunderdome 
for DFS. That's a 35 person contest. Um, I know Karain loved to focus on the super small field spies, like the hundred entry, 200 entry. I mean, you were often loading up massive on one game, like a, an onslaught with two bring backs or two major stacks. Like that strategy works in a single game environment. But imagine then if you said, okay, you now have, you can use that strategy, but you have to use it three weeks in a row. You have to use the same players in the same game stack week 15, week 16, week 17. That's essentially what the best ball tournament is. You're not getting to pick your spots. You're not getting to do all the other things we get to do on a weekly basis. So I do think the full on onslaughts are much more difficult to pull off for this specific tournament structure. Peter, everyone's loving Peter's draft. He did get the Stafford and he has the Herbert there. Oh, and I forgot the cup. Oh man, that's the cleanest. We got the, the clean double stacks, or I guess he still needs to round out his, uh, his chargers double stack. Someone snipe Gerald Everett. So Peter doesn't get the cleanest of clean stacks. Note to self. Don't let Peter get Gerald Everett. Mm. All right. What am I looking at here? <laughs> Chris, $4.99? $4.99. Here's a puppy. Keep owning. Thank you, Chris. That's very nice of you. I will draft a puppy team in your honor. I need to I need to see what I got going on with my team here. Too much talking, not enough correlation. I kind of like this team, guys. I know I didn't draft enough wide receivers for you, but getting the Tom Brady double stack at that price feels pretty good. Should I grab, should I toss Gronk into it? Should we triple it? Or do I, I can't take Rashad White. Rashad White has been my crutch. I draft him in basically every other draft, it seems. What's going on in the overflow draft? FF Doom, I'm cooking with a Stafford Premium and Kyler Hop. Ooh. Silas says people are going to consider him a robust RB truther. Who does he have? Lenny, Connor. Montgomery and Damian Harris. That is a counselor approved running back cohort. You need more tout beachhead. What do you want me to tout? Tell me what to tout. All right. What am I going to be doing here? Get off my screen running backs. Get off my screen. We don't have any other quarterback stacks to worry about for now. We need wide receivers. We need wide receivers. What is Dr. Cunningham going to do? He has JT, Saquon, Kittle. A lot of players I like on this team. A lot of players I like. What are you going to maybe get his Adam Thielen stack with Kirk Cousins? What are you going to do, Cunningham? I think I'm going to take Robert Woods if he slips. I'm going to just continue the olds. They play Dallas. Oh, I got sniped. I got sniped. Hmm. What are we going to do? Yeah. Sports kind of gross right now. I guess we're just going to take Kenny Galladay. Anything else I'm missing? Anything else I'm missing? Ugh. I don't like this spot. I guess we're just going to take Kenny Galladay. Uh, and then what am I going to do here? I'm still not going to like this spot. I still. Oh, Jay Brooks, get me Shepard. Jay Brooks, what, what is your infatuation with, with Sterling Shepard? There's a, it's like you and, and Josh always in the splash play chat pushing Julio. You, you, 
Why, how did you end up being obsessed with the seventh best pass catcher on the Giants this year? Yeah, I'm going to have to. I don't think I need to do anything. There's nothing with quarterback that I need to do right now. Is there anything with tight end I need to do right now? Not much with Miami, Green Bay, Denver. Yeah, yeah. Can wait a second on tight end. Miko Hardman, I have no KC correlation stuff. Tim Patrick, I have no Denver stuff. Devontae Parker, no New England stuff. Jarvis Landry, all right. We want Philadelphia. I've been doing this one a lot. It's kind of fine, fine. Landry and A.J. Brown, ugh. Yuck. Actually, I don't know why I'm saying yuck to, to Landry. It's fine. I think it goes back to one of those things, too, in the same way saying how you can often get funneled toward the same type of players because of structure. I, I do think I want to check myself on always getting funneled toward the same correlations, right? Because again, we're, we're trying to use the correlation to help us not be as dependent on getting all this stuff right. But if you're always picking the exact same players for that correlation, then you're going to, then you're going to find yourself overexposed to certain players which again is pretty ironic because one of the nice things about correlation is it brings upon natural diversification. But I just know that I have a ton of uh, um, Landry and AJ Brown now because Olave always feels too expensive. I don't really like Michael Thomas. There just aren't a lot of good New Orleans correlation options in the second half of the draft. Jake says, what did you think of the Jock Peterson, Tommy fan drama? I thought it was hilarious. Um, I was a little bummed to find out that, I mean, how soft is Tommy fam? You know, at first it's like, oh, this IR thing, which was just hilarious. And then we find out it was because he was talking shit with the most harmless gif I've ever seen. <laughs> like, like the kind of gif, like your dad would send you. Um, I was waiting for like this super savage joke in the league chat. <laughs> It's like some weightlifter dudes. Like how soft is Tommy fan? And then he's also acting like they're just playing for ungodly amounts of money. Who's the commissioner of this league? That's who we need to hear from. I will say I watching the jock videos though, uh, I became an immediate fan. He was, uh, he was handling those questions as if he was testifying on the stand. And you knew inside, he thought this was so hilarious. And, but he's just going with the straight face, uh, recounting how absurd that league drama was. The funny thing is, too, is I'm in one of my longtime keeper leagues that I've been in, you know, 10 plus years. We had a similar fight a long time ago about people exploiting that IR loophole. And we host our league on MFL. They ended up um, voting for this measure where once you slide a guy to IR, he has to remain there for at least two plus weeks, which it's not a perfect solution, but it actually kind of curbed it a little bit because if you're just trying to jockey around an out guy and then he's healthy next week and you want to play him, well, then he's frozen on your IR. So it at least got people to pause uh, when trying to exploit that loophole. But I mean, pretty, pretty good advertisement for fantasy football. Um when it's causing uh, bench clearing brawls uh, in MLB. Truly the more interesting of the sports, fantasy football over MLB. Sorry, MLB truthers. Yeah, Matt says fam has always been a lunatic. Literally, I'd never heard of either of those guys before this. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, fam probably lost more money from the suspension than the buy-in for that league. Yeah, I, I saw it was like came out to like one hundred and ten thousand dollars. He was going to end up being, he was going to end up losing from the three-game suspension. I mean, what what do we think their their league buy-in is? Ten thousand, twenty-five thousand. I highly doubt those dudes are playing fifty thousand dollar fantasy league. I could be wrong though. 
Looks like we have. Ooh, what are we going to do here? What are we going to do? Got mathology. Do I need to go over to the splash play? I think we do. Keep, this is supposed to be my my special place, my happy place away from spags and all of your guys' horniness. It's a Tuesday morning. I'm still drinking iced coffee. Come on. Come on, mathology. <laughs> Jay Brooks, you are unhinged. Jay Brooks with another, another tip, 499 Super Chat. And he says, fantasy players are the real athletes. One day will be more famous than the players. I mean, it's honestly not even that absurd of a thing. Like, look at the, look at media guys like Woj and Schefter. Th those guys are more famous than, what, 90% of the players they cover? It's crazy. All right, Dr. Cunningham, don't snipe me again. I'm going to get, I'm going, I'm going to say it when I feel like the delay is far enough. I want to take Jahan Dotson. I don't have a lot of him and he plays Nick Chubb in week 17. Please, Dr. Cunningham. Thank you. All right, we've, we've, we've rallied on our, on our wide receivers here a bit. Um, thank you, Dustin. What do I want to do here? Still nothing in this quarterback range that I absolutely need to do. Um, hmm. Hmm. This is a weird spot. Um, I, I take Cole Komet in so many drafts. I guess I'm just going to take Cole Komet, but I don't feel great about it. I have no justification for the Cole Komet pick. Ask me why. Ask me why. I don't know why. I didn't see anything else I liked. I was going to take Pickens, but Peter grabbed him. I guess I could have taken Alec Pierce. Just continued with my... Um, I probably should have taken Alec Pierce. Then I could have set up my Daniel Jones to Galladay with the Alec Pierce bring back. I'm done taking running backs. I'm done. A lot of, a lot of the robust RB bros, they can't help themselves. They draft their three and then they go, I just want one more, just one that can help me stay warm and cozy at night. No, not me. We raw dog it with three. Yeah, Willis says, Peter, did you not see Hunter Henry is having breakfast with Mac Jones now? I did. I caught that. They were at, uh, what, Fagawi uh, at Nantucket this weekend getting breakfast. I have adjusted my ranks, but I've clearly not adjusted my ranks enough. Hmm. Kev Blaster says, are you winning? Is this just kind of a existential question? Are you winning? This is like the meme where the uh, the dad comes in the room and the, the kid stick figure is at the computer. Are you winning, son? You should look at the three RB data from, from two years ago, Connor. It absolutely crushed the best ball mania. And this is the other thing too, that I'm always trying to drive home to Spags because he <laughs> wants to just do one structure every single draft is we, we now have three structures over a large sample size that have proven to be very successful. And also I feel like we need to shout out Mike beers more when we talk about hyper fragile. Um, Leone, I think, did a really good job of uh, kind of popularizing it uh, a couple years ago. And then Herzig obviously won with a hyperfragile build. But Mike Beers wrote about hyperfragile and drafting three running backs 
probably six or seven years ago, back when MFL 10s were the only best ball ones. And I remember reading about that strategy when he talked about it. And I thought, this, this is so weird. How could you only take three running backs? And I had only done about 10 MF, MFL 10s, but then I became obsessed with Hyper Fragile. I did, I think, probably five or six drafts where I only took three running backs, ended up winning two of those 10 MFL 10 drafts uh, with the Hyper Fragile strategy. Uh, Mike Beers, an OG legend uh, with coming upon that strategy. And I forget what he used to to kind of stumble upon that, if that was like a Monte Carlo sim or whatever, but um, Mike Beers, a true best ball uh, thought leader over at Rotoviz. All right, what am I going to do here? What am I going to do? Should I grab Winston? Are we worried about Winston? I saw Nick Underhill reporting about Winston still playing with a leap. Willis says, love beers, water. He's the reason I got into best ball. Yep. Same here. Let's see. Let's, let's go ahead and take Winston. I don't have a lot of him. We'll get that Winston. Winston to Landry stack with the with the AJ Brown bring back in week 17. We'll have the Brady double stack to Godwin engage with Christian McCaffrey coming back. We got our Chubb versus Jahan Dotson. Jahan Dotson. This has been a good draft for me getting players that I don't have a lot of otherwise. Let's tack on. Let's just keep let's keep the train rolling. I don't have any Curtis Samuel either. I know the Taysom Hill bros. I mean, if we have to rank, I mean, bye week bros are our number one. Handcuff bros, maybe number two. The Taysom Hill bros, they are becoming an incredible vocal minority. I think it was, who was it? Liam and Davis were tagging me in Taysom Hill tweets. All right. Learn a size is giving me the lowdown on Jameis's um, recovery. Limp isn't super concerning this early on, he says. Okay. He's in the clear. We're in the clear. Phew. Jay Brooks, I, I can't even. We there has to be a, a threshold, either the comment or the amount of money you throw at me for me to actually have to read these things. I'm not reading that comment. This is another video exclusive for the audio listeners. All right, we have sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Maybe, maybe I will tack on a Taysom Hill in this build. This actually feels like a build where we could tack that on. Spags and I will be back at 2.30 today to do a splash play draft. That'll be... I'm not sure if we'll do a puppy or a best ball mania. We did a puppy on Thursday last week. I'm down for either. I'll be curious. I mean, Spags has been just absolutely blasting off on drafts. Um, I think I saw someone in the in the Deposit Kingdom Discord said they were in, he was in like every one of their drafts. The 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 low-key best ball grinders, Bill Barnwell, Chris Spags. Who who else do you guys see in all of your drafts these days? Michael says, is anti-barbell now the move since no ship chasers will be in those drafts? Well, I was I was uh, always basically not by choice. Uh, I wasn't going to be a barbell, bro. I, I'm just going to be drafting at about the same clip all summer. 
And then I'll probably naturally be behind by the time we get to mid-August. And then I'll really have to pick up the pace. My guess is I'm going to be um, a barbell where there's a 45-pound weight on one side and a 25-pound weight on the other. Uneven barbell, hyper-modified content bro strategy for me. DJ says, does Taysom Hill get points on UD if he comes in at QB? Yes. Yes. That's why that's why the Taysom Hill bros are so excited because you could be getting quarterback points from the tight end spot. Hmm. Look at this. Look at this board here. Where are all the wide receivers? Oh, maybe I do just need to take Julio. Um, just for the poetry of this old, old man draft I'm doing. Hmm. Yeah. Beachhead says, come back to the slow draft dark side. I have a couple slow drafts going normally, but I, I haven't gotten to the point I did last year where I was like, all right, let me just register for 25 drafts right now and see how it goes. Maybe you guys will force me into a fourth running back if one of these really falls. Um, let's grab, let's see, is Peter going to take Taysom Hill? Hmm, he might. I'll take Taysom. No, you don't win, Chris. I took Taysom. Uh, Doby, I've done 70 drafts so far, 45 BBM3. Seems like a reasonable amount. Seems like a reasonable amount. I mean, the puppy draft is the kindest thing the underdog best ball gods ever did for Barbell Bros. Because you guys you guys can look at your spreadsheets and your optimal draft times all you want, but push comes to shove. If there wasn't a secondary contest for you to be drafty god, you would have been blasting off. All right, now you're right, Chris. Now I'll draft Julio. Um... Trust me, you, you, you'd be sitting there, you'd be itching your arms, wondering what to do with your time. You'd maybe go to hop in a DraftKings lobby and then realize, I hate myself when I draft on DraftKings. It's a miserable experience. And then you'd come back and you'd say, you know what? Barbelling is great on in theory, but I need to draft. But Underdog bailed you out. They dropped the puppy. Now the barbell bros have something to do during the dog days of summer. Jay Brooks says you're throwing away money if you're doing slow drafts. Dubner actually has an article about this up on Rotoviz, and it actually wasn't the case. There was basically no discernible difference between slow drafts and fast drafts as far as uh, win rates and profitability. I think it's all just preference. I know. Where is Josh? Josh is a is a splash play maxi. I don't think he chills uh, in the best ball breakfast, but someone let Josh know that I did take Julio Jones for him. Mathology, don't make me bonk you again. Mm. All right, what do we want to do here with this last pick? So we are at we're at a two three nine three build. We have Brady and Winston. We have McCaffrey, Chubb, and Brees at running back. Our wide receivers, A.J. Brown, Godwin, Hopkins, Gage, Kenny Galladay, Jarvis Landry, Jahan Dotson, Curtis Samuel, Julio Jones. My God, this team is old. This team gets the senior discount at the Sizzler. Tight ends, Schultz, Komet, Taysom Hill. Feel good about that. Man, this team is old. This team is so old. Brees Hall and Jahan Dotson look like young children on this team disgusting absolutely disgusting maybe we draft maybe we draft a young running back just to smooth things out just to get a little more youth on this team let's see the these wide receivers i think i'm good i'm good at tight end Are any of the quarterbacks falling i don't need i don't need three qbs in this build
Alex says the slow drafts have some wild falls with people so focused on their stacks and queued up. Yeah, I think that makes sense to me too, right? Obviously, people are going to make more mistakes in a fast draft, panicking, you know, selecting Cole Komet because they don't know what else to do. But you're also going to get, I think there's a there's an element of FOMO that happens in slow drafts where you're it's it's you get so worried that you're not going to complete your stack that I think like Alex is describing you can see people be like I'm, I'm just, I can't I can't wait I can't wait four days to find out if I complete the stack I'll just reach around and a half and get him now Jim says would it be better EV to draft let's say 15 drafts in every best ball contest on underdog or maxing out BBM3 it it's all just it's all just preference too for you know obviously the puppy is a much smaller draft so your chances of getting a team through to the finals is going to be greater but it's 75,000 to first instead of 2 million so it all kind of depends on your goals it's the same thing with DFS tournament selection right like it's it's super fun to play the million maker cuz you could win a million or you could play a 100 200 person tournament and your expectations for cashing would be realized far quicker. I've talked about this with Brian Hooper on Lowell's a lot, right? Like you could be the best best ball player in the world in the same way you can be the best DFS player in the world. And it could take you years and years, decades and decades to realize that edge in some of these contests, the way they're structured. All right. I think I am going to cave. I'm going to grab Brian Robinson as my fourth running back here, build out my, my cheap bet on Washington late. There you go. Just for the hyper fragile bros. One more. Um, so yeah, Jim, I would say it's just completely, completely has to depend or do with what your personal goals are. You know, I think if you exclusively maxed out BBM three, if you're drafting optimally, there's going to be so much variance to, to your results just with how this tournament is structured and how hard it is going to be to have a top ROI without, you know, advancing a team to the finals. It's basically impossible. Um, let's see here. I'll uh, quickly look at a couple of these teams and then I need to get on my way. Silas wanted the sauce. Silas with the high T draft. Kelsey Fournette. Actually, it's easier to look at them this way. Burrow and Fields, Fournette, Connor Montgomery, Harris, James Robinson. I mean, I guess I I guess Silas, I don't, I don't know why, why we're why we're drafting James Robinson here, other than the fact that. <laughs> He dropped 50 picks behind ADP. So I guess I can't really complain about that too much. You were able to go with the, um, it was basically a luxury pick because you set it up with the, the two QB, two tight end, which definitely works with Kelsey, which definitely works with Burrow. Wide receivers, Judy, Mooney, Olave, Boyd, Shark, Corey, Wandell, Sammy Watkins, Pascal. Yeah, I, uh, I like this team. My my initial thing would be, why are you taking a fifth running back with Fournette, Connor, Montgomery, and Harris? But it was basically a luxury pick at the very end. Um, Aaron wants to get sauce from the 104. Hawkberg, Mahomes, and Wilson. I don't love um, using two top 75 picks on quarterbacks, but let's see what you did with it. KC, you got MVS. Um with Denver, you got <clears throat> Tim Patrick and Akui Boonham. I guess my thing here is I, I know Mahomes slid seven picks past ADP. I don't know if that's if that's enough um, to also only just have a single stack with him. It's just like a lot of capital to invest in the Chiefs to only have a single stack with him in MBS. I like what you did with Denver, the running back, Swift, Javante, Singletary, Herbert. I like that. Akui Boonham, Fant, and Ingram. That seems solid at tight end. Yeah, it seems uh, 
it seems solid. It's just, I have a hard time getting excited about a Mahomes skinny stack. Oh, you have Juju too. My bad. My bad. Juju. I take it all back. You get an A. The teacher made a mistake. Um, Willis says he's always been a Robinson stand, but man, that Achilles is no joke. Yeah, I feel like that's been, um, that's one of the hot topics of conversation right now, how to handle these guys coming back from these Achilles. It is, it's a tough balance, right? Because it is super easy to justify taking these injured guys in this tournament structure. Because all, all, if they can just have one big week, weeks 15 through 17, they'll probably pay off their cost because you're getting them at an injury discount right now. But on the other hand, how much unnecessary risk are you taking on? And then I think the then it just always boils down to that question, does this player have the chance to put up a monster score when you need it? I'd argue James James Robinson does. Michael Gallup does. Chris Godwin does. Jamison Williams does. Um, all right. Anyone else wanted uh, a look at their team? Who else was in here? Casey for sending me a Venmo request. Ooh, Casey went with the vomit quarterbacks. Zach Wilson, Daniel Jones, Jimmy Garoppolo. I guess I don't get the Jimmy Garoppolo. I just don't get it. I just, on those late round picks, I want inertia and momentum moving in my direction, right? Where everything's moving in the opposite direction of Jimmy Garoppolo, where I, I'd almost rather take, you know, a Ritter or a Malik Willis or someone where there are paths to them taking over as opposed to Jimmy Garoppolo, where you're holding on for dear life. That said, if your thesis is Trey Lance rides the pine for another year and you have Debo, I guess, I guess, I think I'm kind of sick. I, I think I just rock a two QB build with this one. Zach Wilson and Daniel Jones probably just yellow it. All right, I'll do a couple other real quick. Peter in the 101 spot here. Oh, yeah, and he just wants us to salivate over his perfect double stacks here. Justin Herbert and Matthew Stafford to Cup, Keenan. Um, he did get the spiller in there. So this running back room here, Kamara, Gibson, Madison, Rashad White, Spiller, Marlon Mack. Wide receivers, Cup, Allen, A-Rob, Ayuk, Pickens, DPJ, Duvernay, Vilas Jones, like that. Dallas Goddard, Logan Thomas. Yeah, I think this looks fine. I probably, I probably go a wide receiver instead of Marlon Mack there. But again, this is what happens in these rooms. You get these running back values, Marlon Mack sliding all the way to pick 216, but just not, not my favorite pick in this build where I think you could just use a smidge more wide receiver firepower um to, 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 to tigers uh what are your thoughts on grabbing moster in 18 to create some kind of new england miami side yeah i think moster in the 18th is is great value i still like taking stabs on him um visca has been banished to special teams this was always the prophecy is there a tweet about this someone sent me a tweet about visca going to special teams he will rise like a phoenix it's like um, it's like with uh, crypto or stocks, right? Where we we say we need to shake out all the paper hands before we can truly soar. That's what we're having to do with Visca. We're having to shake out all the non-believers. And trust me, we've done a good job. There are only a few of us left. We need Visca to hit absolute rock bottom before we can soar again. Appreciate you guys hanging out on this Tuesday edition of Best Ball Breakfast. Like I said, I'll be back at 2.30 with Spags. Uh, for Splash Play, we have Club Top Shot tonight and two videos dropping soon that I'm very excited about. The Underdog Cardio Club, we're going to have details for that. It's going to be running the month of June. And then also my strategy video uh, looking at week 17, why and how we should be optimizing for it in these Best Ball Mania tournaments specifically. Very excited for that to drop. Should be ready in the next day or two. That'll be on my Deposit Kingdom channel over there. Um, so make sure you are subscribed and don't miss that. Otherwise I will see you guys around. Have a great rest of your week.
Oh, 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 oh,